Would you like to know the best way to pay for your vacation home when you retire? A lot of retirees ask that question and move to the Carolinas um, to live a life of leisure during their retirement. Um, what I'm going to go over today is a few mistakes that retirees tend to make when they're purchasing their home or financing their second home. Um, so uh, some, some people, what they tend to do is take out their money from their pre-tax accounts, their 401ks and their IRAs. This, when they take their money from their pre-tax accounts, that's, a, in, in a, in, that's taxable money. And that could pump bump them up into the next tax bracket. And it and that could cost them 20, 30, in some cases, 40% or more in taxes, which is very, very expensive money. Another mistake that I've seen people make is if they have taxable investments with low cost basis investments, um, when they sell those investments, they may have to pay capital gains on that. Uh, and long-term capital gains, which means things that you've held for over a year. Um, you can pay up to 20% in federal taxes on that. And that's not even including state tax. So if you have to pay anywhere between, let's call it 10 to 30% on capital gains tax, that also can be quite expensive. Another thing that I've seen people um, make, mistakes I've seen people make is buying too much house. Um, you know, they, they, they visualize, you know, a, a house that they've grown, that they've used when their kids are at home and, and that type of square footage. But when they retire, um, it's usually just the, the couple usually, and, and they don't need as much square foot. So buying a house as far as the size is concerned, it's more appropriate the type of lifestyle that you're going to be living. In addition to that, I've seen people think, well, hey, I'll, I'll, we'll buy a house and we'll use it for three months out of the year and then rent it out the other three months. Um, a lot of times I've seen a mistake made where, hey, it's going to be fully rented for nine months. Um, we're going to get this price and we're going to have only this amount of expenses. They grossly overestimate the amount of revenue they're going to generate and they underestimate how much expenses that'll be. And, and that could be extremely costly because there's maintenance fees and, and things like that. I've also seen it even taken a step further that, that, well, hey, we'll manage it ourselves. Well, now you've gone from being retired to being a property manager. And, and that it takes a lot of time and effort to do that. So just make sure you're really working with the right real estate agent in that regard. Um, also, um, as far as being able to, to finance the property, one of the things I've seen um, smart retirees do is if they have taxable investments with low, low cost basis investments um, and they're worried about capital gains, is they can borrow. You may potentially have the ability to borrow from the account, not on margin, but an asset back line of credit, an asset back line of credit. Many instances, times you can get that um that type of of line of credit at a very low interest rate and so that you can borrow money from your account pay no capital gain tax as far as your down payment or a significant portion of your down payment on that um, secondly you want to make sure that you that you buy that you finance your property correct or right according to what your needs are and and so that it gives you maximum amount of flexibility and depending on your situation it might be uh, um, you know, 15 year mortgage or 30 year, it could be even a five in one arm, things like that. So if you get any questions about anything at all, certainly feel free to give us a call over here at Riverbend Wealth Management. Happy to chat with you. No cost or obligation. 843-970-1049. 843-970-1049 and retire happy. Thanks.